Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we are going to go over the programming of the Pentair Intellichem. And y'all are going to find out why none of my children would allow me to help them with the homework. Uh, mainly I give them too much information and they're just looking for the answer. So, take it out of the box. Hopefully you can figure out how to hook it up and... And then we're going to go through some of the programming options with this. Okay, so it should come up like this. If it doesn't, then just go ahead and hit your menu button. So, um, and you're going to go down and say that you want to reset everything. So we're going to hit the menu button. And um, this is our hardware setup wizard. All right, it comes up with left pump, right pump. The chances of you having that are about zero. This is the old, old Intellichems, and that has a little 20-volt stenter pump on the left and a 20-volt stenter pump on the right. We're not doing that. Okay, here it says left pump, right pump. You are not likely going to use this. This is the old-school Intellichem where they actually had the 20 volt pump on the left hand side of the device on the IntelliCam and a 20 volt pump on the right hand side. The next one, again, left pump, not going to use that. Left pump with that, you're not going to use that. You're not going to use the left pump with a relay. So here you come to your first option, which is relay to an iClure. This is probably going to be exactly what you're going to use. Chances are you're going to have an IntelliClore cell and then you're going to have a pH or an acid tank and a pump to that acid tank. So that would be correct. Now I'm going to go through a couple of these more and again you're never going to use that. That isn't even programmed in yet. Option left relay or relay 2 is pH and relay 1 is ORP. That is a possibility. If you are setting up a commercial IntelliClor, this would actually be correct because you're going to use relay 1 as to turn on the IntelliClor because it requires a dry contact relay. And then relay two is going to feed over to a 120 volt stenter pump. So that could be an important one. But for setup purposes, we are going to go back and we are going to use relay two and iClor. So once we have that, we're going to hit our menu button. And here it comes up and it asks for the doser pump rated output. It says 50 gallons per day. Technically that is incorrect. Originally Pentair used a f number 5 tube on a stenter pump and that would put out 50 gallons per day. They later found that the reliability of that was low and so and you didn't need that much volume and so they switched it to a number two tube, which only puts out 10 gallons per day. However, when they did this, they re or revved the software, and the 50 gallons per day is the correct for a number two tube. It will do the proper calculations. Okay, so what is the volume of your pool? So hopefully you can go in and figure out the length, the width, the average depth, multiply that times 7.48, and that will give you how many gallons the pool is. The default is 10,000 gallons. If you have a 25,000 gallon pool, of course, you're going to have to increase that. If you have a smaller pool, such as a spa, uh, you may have to bring that down to as little as 500 gallons and you just have to calculate the spa. So for this 
purpose, we're going to stick with the 10,000 gallon pool. Let's just say it's a smaller fiberglass pool. Okay, um, how long does your filter run? Quite honestly, if you have a high end variable speed IntelliFlow pump, whether it's an IntelliFlow XF, whether it's in it, just a regular Whisperflow and Teleflow, or even a Superflow VST, then you will probably run your pump 24 hours. That would be the correct thing to do. But so you're going to take this number and you're going to raise it all the way up to 24. So we're running 24 hours a day. What is your container size? Well, if you purchase the kit that comes with the container and it has a little stenter pump mounted on top of the container, that is four gallons. But of course, there are larger tanks that you can purchase and you can take this all the way up to 200 gallons if you'd like. Next, you'll see the gauge. The gauge tells you, well, how full is the tank? And of course, hopefully, you're going to start off with a full tank and then this unit will automatically calculate as that tank gets depleted and you will be able to see on your app whether there's any muriatic acid or chlorine whatever you're using still left in your container. Aggressive pH control. This is for new gunite pools. So if you have a pool on startup, you're going to want to collect, you're going to want to select yes. Once you're past startup, then you're going to want to say no. Is the water balanced? It is extremely important that the water is balanced correctly. This way you'll have the correct pH reading and you'll have the correct ORP reading. So the default is no. If you hit no, it's going to put you back to the beginning and tell you to rebalance the water. So our water is balanced. Okay, you're now finished and you need to verify your setups. Of course, this is going to tell you there's no flow detected. Uh, I actually do not have it hooked up. But I want to go into the menus and set up a few things. So this is our pH menu and you can come over here to dosage and on screen one you're going to see dosing by volume and then you're going to set a mixing time and its default is two hours and 59 minutes that is quite extreme I tend to come down here and I change that to typically about 30 minutes that should be more than enough for the chemicals to feed, get out, dissipate through your pool, and come back and give you a somewhat accurate reading. So that is my choice. So one of the other things you saw is as you were going through this, we could dose by something other than volume and that would be we could dose by time. Now, if you're used to the old Accutrol AK-110s and the AK-600s, you may prefer this because you've grown accustomed to, well, I want the pump on for this long and I want the pump to just sit around and do nothing for this long. Well, of course, sitting around doing nothing is your mixing time. But for the convenience of most people, they're going to do mixing by volume. So we're going to go ahead and then we're going to go to our screen two. Dosing limits. So this is calculated out from that 50 gallon per day number. So this says, okay, I am going to dose three units or three ounces and I'm going to set a limit of 21 ounces per day. 
And that would be about right for figuring out your pH, lowering your pH. So we're happy with that. So now if we go back, we come down to the set point. Of course, the standard set point is 7.5. If for some reason your probe is not reading the correct pH, you can come in and you can tweak it. So this would tell you if it was connected, what your pH is, and then how much you want to tweak it, and it'll actually give you your answer of what your recalibrated pH is going to be for the probe. Supplies, you're going to have to come down here, and um, this is, of course, acid for our pH. And if we go to screen two, when you want to change or refill, you're going to want to come in here and you're going to want to come down to your gauge and typically it's going to be at zero and when you fill it back up you're going to put it all the way back up to six so that as you're looking at your app on your phone you know how much hopefully sulfuric acid um, you have sitting in your tank. Sensitivity, we're going to skip that. pH alarms, this is going to tell you when it's going to tell you that something is out of range. So if your pH goes above 7.8, then you'll get an alarm, and the alarm will tell you that your pH is too high. It's one of many alarms that you can set on this unit. Okay, one of the first things that you're going to do is come down here and you're going to go to configuration and then you're going to go down to delays and your power on delay they have set for 14 minutes. That's kind of ridiculous. So I come down here and I typically set that to two minutes. Now, initially, when you put the probes in, I would say yes. You're going to need 15, 30, sometimes multiple hours for the probes to stabilize. And so you want to hook your probes up and get everything going for a few hours before you actually set this up. Then the flow switch delay is only one minute. and that's pretty good. You have a doser or probe delay of 15 seconds. Those are all pretty good times. I don't ever set passwords. I'm not a believer in it unless it's in a commercial application. Display mode, if you come over here, um, you have basic and advanced. I tend to like the advanced because then it shows me the pH and the displays your mixing time and it also shows your ORP and the mixing times. So I always choose advance for that. Um, pool details, if you had to say, oh, well, I screwed up and it's really 12,000 gallons, not 10,000 gallons, you come back here and you could change it. So now we're going to come up and we're going to go to ORP menu and we have very similar menus in here as compared to the pH menu so if we select dosing you'll see that we have screen one and our mixing time is set to one minute that's rather curious and if we come and we look at screen two our limit is 24 hours and so therefore we're going to always 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 have the salt cell so that it is capable of coming on and that is why you only have a mixing time of one minute if you are using ORP for a chlorine stenter pump then of course you would have a whole different setup here 
here is your set point and this is very important that you have your water balanced and you have your proper chlorine because now your ORP probe is going to be reading what the actual correct ORP is. So ORP stands for oxid oxidation reduction potential and it is not a true measurement of the chlorine it is a relationship so you will measure your chlorine with some type of DPD method of measuring chlorine and then you will set your set point to match what your ORP probe is reading at the time. This number will vary with a lot of different variables in the pool. If your alkalinity changes, this will change. If your pH changes, this will change. If your cyanuric acid or stabilizer changes, this will change. If your calcium changes, this will change. If your salt changes, this will change. So ORP is rather dynamic and you're going to have to keep an eye on it. So set it for whatever the correct chlorine reading is when you set this up. You can come in here and you can tweak it. I wouldn't really recommend tweaking an ORP probe. It just doesn't make sense. You always want it to put out the maximum number of millivolts because that's what it's measuring. It's actually a conductivity measurement and it puts out millivolts. Like the pH, you also have supplies. In this case, your supplies are limited because you have um, the iClor set up. So there is no really gauge that you're going to need because you basically have unlimited. Those are your main menus. That is how you're going to go ahead and set this up. This is now set up for a typical pool of 10,000 gallons and we are using an IntelliClor salt cell and we are using an OR and I'm, we are using a acid system with a Stenner pump in it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Please feel free to apply to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.